Deputy Mark Sherry. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, glad to have an opportunity to make a couple of points. Um, <coughs> I don't know what's in this deal. Uh, I look forward to hearing uh, from, I suppose, our own parliamentary party and, and what comes out of the Philogain parliamentary party, uh, if there is, in fact, a way forward. Uh, but the roots of this tobacco, as far as I'm concerned, go back to 1977, uh, when our predecessors in this chamber, from all parties and none, uh, engage in American-style uh, auction politics, uh, where um, Fine Gael at the time decided that they were going to uh, reduce domestic rates and reduce car tax, uh, and my own party, Fianna Fáil, at the time decided, well, we can top that, let's abolish domestic rates and abolish car tax. Uh, and I think that created uh, two things, the inability of local authorities throughout the country uh, to in some way operate under their own steam, uh, to undertake their own projects, uh, to have the level of financing to do that, rather than being dependent upon solely uh, the proximity of a senior minister to one's constituency to bank projects that need to be done, whether it was water or others, uh, or um, uh, population, uh, where obviously uh, those where more people were living were going to get greater priority. Uh, and that system uh, has struggled along in terms of local government funding uh, since. And why we uh, would like to blame it on the Troika, Fianna Fáil, uh, of the previous government and everybody else, uh, I suppose in many ways that's what led us to today. Uh, in terms of uh, the need to have enough resourcing, do we need to have enough financing uh, to undertake uh, the works uh, that we required. There's no question that in 1977 domestic rates did require reform, uh, whereby a um, uh, large family, perhaps nine children in rural Ireland at the time, a large farmhouse, the husband died, uh, there was a widower there, she leased the land for nominal rent that wouldn't keep much going, uh, and the nine children were gone to the four corners of the earth. Uh, and that person was being rated uh, in a very unfair way on the size of their property. So what we needed at that time uh, was a fair reform of the process, uh, whereby those who can pay should pay uh, a local authority contribution, uh, their refuse collection, uh, and indeed uh, their water. And all of those things were at that time included in it. Uh, but since then, uh, we've made a complete mess of it, collectively, uh, in terms of the people uh, who occupied, uh, occupied uh, the seats uh, in these houses. Uh, and here we are today uh, struggling with that outcome in terms of trying to fund everything from general taxation. So uh, I appreciate the dilemma uh, that has been before the houses in going about this. Having said that, the establishment of Irish Water was like, to my mind, setting up Unilever to run a corner shop. It put the cart before the horse in a major way populated by people who were used to spending the public's money uh, without any need to focus, frankly, uh, on where that money could come from, or more importantly, the affordability from people uh, in terms of contributing uh, and the ability to pay. Um, what we had was 31 local authorities throughout the country populated with good staff who knew what schemes had to be undertaken. In my own constituency in Sligo, for example, uh, there are three particular schemes known, uh, I'm sure, to the Minister as the Bundle Scheme, Grange, County Sligo, Tubber Curry and Strand Hill, uh, each shovel-ready projects for quite a number of years now. Uh, and instead of Irish water and water rates uh, having brought that project forward, it's brought it in reverse. Uh, we now have Irish water personnel, albeit uh, with the same expertise in Sligo County Council now on service level agreements uh, with Irish water, who know what, need, what work needs to be done, uh, the resources aren't being provided to them, uh, and any decision they make has to be laundered through some outfit down in Cork first before they're allowed to proceed in any way. Those three schemes that I spoke of are being scaled back so that if built, they will not be able to provide for any additional housing, any additional business. And that's in a town of Sligo where, for example, the IDA are about to undertake the development of a 70-acre uh, uh, park for industry. Uh, so we're not taking cognizance uh, of any of those things. Uh, and I think uh, that if we were to take the money that was spent on metres and spent on the establishment of Irish water, different figures up to 750 million, and distributed that money through the 31 local authorities and the expertise that was there on site, how much further would, be down, would we be down the road towards the 5.5 billion in terms of investment that has to be done all over the country? I'm only giving a Sligo example. I'm sure that's replicated here in Dublin where we have uh, infrastructure that's hundreds of years old and every rural area and every village throughout uh, the country. So I think... Um, I'm glad if today is the day we're drawing a line in the sand and beginning to move forward. I'm glad that the power in terms of charges and structures will lay with this House. 
uh, and the sum of all of the people in this house, rather than a government who, uh, whether it was Fianna Fáil in the past or Fine Gael now, whoever else, who ran the place thank effectively as a dictatorship disguised as a democracy. Thank you, I'm just concluding now, Kieran Corlan, and thank you very, very much. So I welcome future debates uh, on this. As I said, I don't know what's in the deal, but I hope that the essence of that thank deal you, is, whatever colour or independent or whatever, of people that are in this house, that it will be they who have the say on the future of these issues. Thank, Thank you. you, Deputy. Uh, next lot.